This is the BMW X1. Now the old X1 didn't really look much like an SUV, did it? Its nose is just too long and it kind of reminded me of a Toucan and its huge bill. This one though, the proportions are just right. It does look like an SUV, so it's kind of chunky, it's tall. It's actually based on the mini platform rather than a BMW platform. And that has allowed BMW to maximize the space inside for the overall outside dimension. So if you come into the back, you'll see I have got loads of knee room, absolutely acres of headroom. In fact, this car is more spacious in the back than its key rivals, such as the Mercedes GLA and the Audi Q3 Plus. I mean, look, the middle seat, it's not the widest, but it is comfy enough if you need to carry three. And there may be a hump in the floor, but it's not too large. And the footwells are huge, so there's enough room for everyone's feet. Also, you can get this car with rear seats that slide for more boot space. They also recline as well so you can get even more comfortable and if i pull this down you'll see you've got an armrest there some cup holders there little pointless storage area there but this is useful the fact that these seats split three ways so you can carry two people in the back and some skis through there or longer items if you need to so yeah on the whole in the back seats this car is very very impressive moving on to the boot so as with the back seats this is the biggest boot in its class it's absolutely massive i mean look at that loads of room there nice square shape as well and there's no low lip to lift stuff over you've got some cubby storage about the place you've got 12 volt socket you've got tethering points i mean what's not to like and look how much underfloor storage is under there i could get under there and this is a feature i do really like as well look i can fold down the rear seats just by putting a button i don't have to reach in there we go. And there you have it, a nice flat low bay. This is one very practical car. Now, if you click it there, you can get more information by watching our detailed practicality video. You can see just how much stuff we could fit in this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat in the back, and just what it's like with three adults in the rear. Now, that brings us on to the front of the car, because not only is this more practical than the old X1, it's also more luxurious inside. BMW have really upped their game with this car. The interior quality is way ahead of that of the old car and it's better than that of its rivals as well i mean if you look about the place there's even soft touch plastics down here it's all very lovely nicely laid out as well and then there's the infotainment system now as standard you get a 6.5 inch screen and sat nav right across the range now this particular car actually has the upgraded pro system with an 8.8 .8 inch screen and it's absolutely lovely and you control it all using bmw's iDrive, which i've said so many times in all my reviews i think it's the easiest system to use on the market in fact if you click up there you can watch our full review of the infotainment system of this car and have another good look around this car's cabin and you will notice that it's got decent cubby under there decent cup holders there large door bins as well and yeah, the glove box is a reasonable size. So BMW X1, it looks smart inside and it's very practical. So then that's a sensible stuff dealt with. Now it's time to see what this car's like to drive. The kind of people who are gonna buy this car, they're gonna be more than happy with how this thing handles and feels to drive. So if you compare it to its other small SUV rivals, it does feel the most sporty. It's just the controls, they just feel more alive. So you can feel what the car's doing either through your fingertips or through your bottom. And it does, it grips and goes around corners really well. And the advantage of that is when you're driving in town, you really know what you're doing when you're trying to nip through traffic or maneuver. And it is quite an easy car to drive around town because visibility, especially Ford is very good. This windscreen is huge. There aren't too many blind spots. The only major one I think is the rear pillars because the actual back window is quite large. And if you click it there, you can see for yourself by watching my 360 degree video review passenger ride. So the other thing I should mention on this car is that it's comfy as well. But this one is fitted with the optional adaptive dampers and you should definitely get them. They're not that expensive and they have a comfort mode which just slackens off the ride and makes it really nice and comfy. And on the motorway, it's, it's a good cruise of this car. The only problem is, is that you do get quite a bit of tyre roar. In terms of engines, you get one petrol or three diesels. The best choice for most people is going to be the X118D. It'll do around 68 miles per gallon. This is the range topping X drive, which means it's got four wheel drive, 25D. And yeah, it's really fast. 0 to 16, 6.6 .6 seconds. You've got 230 horsepower, completely unnecessary in a car like this. And economy falls as a result to 56 miles per gallon, though the trick computer says it's fallen even further for me at 39 miles per gallon. Now, the good thing about this particular engine though is that you get the automatic gearbox as standard, and I would recommend it. It's about 1,600 pounds extra, eight-speed auto, lovely, slick, responsive, 
Not everything about the BMW X1 is good. Here's five annoying things about it. I don't know why an automatic car has to have such a huge gear selector. I mean, it's got to be getting on for about seven inches. This car feels pretty luxurious, you know. Can you just remind me again, Jack, how much is this particular car with all the options fitted to it? 42 grand. 42 grand! Oh my God, you could have an X5 for that. You better be careful with the options list. It's a bit annoying that BMW decided to give this car a one. Two piece parcel shelf. It's just two bits to clutter up your boot. This two litre diesel engine is as rough as, I mean, have a listen to this. Sounds like an old van. Unlike with many rivals, auto emergency braking isn't standard. So you've got to be very careful that you don't accidentally hit something. Oh dear. However, it's not all bad. There are plenty of cool features on the X1, which more than make up for all this. The double port bonnet release means that by doing that, you don't have to undo a separate catch underneath the bonnet, and therefore you don't get your hands dirty. With BMW's concierge service, there's someone at your beck and call 24 seven, and they'll even program the sat nav for you remotely if you can't be bothered to do it. The seatbelt locks are covered in this cushioning felt so that they don't rattle or knock when they touch the center console. I like that kind of attention to detail. The optional panoramic sunroof is absolutely blooming massive and you can open it as well. There's Isofix fittings on the front passenger seat, which makes it easy to install the seat base. So then overall, what's my verdict on the BMW X1? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon, yeah, you should go right ahead and buy it because if you're in the market for a small premium SUV and you can afford it, this is the best one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on the car wire logo to subscribe to our channel. And if you click on the video windows, you can watch our detailed practicality, infotainment and 360 degree passenger ride videos for the BMW X1. Did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was a picture of the X1 rocket plane in the car center console.